Welcome to Denmark Real. My name is Amar. With me is Michael Morris, a web designer, digital marketer, and founded and created something called Student Survival Guide. Welcome to you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So about that project. Yeah. Student Survival Guide. Yeah. I talked I talked with uh, Dan today earlier about it. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah. So Student Survival Guide started this. Uh, it's an idea of giving something back to the community. Um, after being four years in Denmark, we have realized that there are many new students that are coming to Denmark and they don't necessarily have any idea what to do when they move to a new country. So we decided to create a set of guides for them um, uh, in a form of video, where we tell them everything they need to know about starting their life in Denmark and going to university. Um, that started as, uh, as an idea a few months ago and ever since that we have transformed this to Let's not focus only on uh, students in Denmark, uh, or let's focus on students, but not only about studies, about the whole aspect of life. Uh, so we want people that are moving to Denmark to have some form of a platform where they can find all the information they need, because we remember how hard it was for us to move to Denmark for the first time and having no access to information. Uh, even simple things as how to shop smarter or, or how to take a bus and how much do things cost. Um, they are not available online and if they are, it's not very easy to find. So we wanted to create one platform where people can find everything they're looking for. I saw a video about a DR license yeah. uh, earlier today. Yeah. What are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we are balancing on the legal and illegal line quite yeah. well so far. Yeah. Uh, there are no lawsuits in our name just yet, so it's, it's all right. Now, if uh, I don't, I don't know if you want to speak about DR license. I, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is the this is the place for it in, in this bootcamp. Not um, necessarily about the DR license, but about the concept about bringing knowledge to um, to people. Uh, yeah, well, there are certain things where other people are maybe too afraid to talk about uh, things like the DR license, which. Um, might be slightly illegal to give advice to someone to not subscribe to it and, and, and whatnot. And for those of the listeners who don't know what DR license is, could you explain it briefly? Because so in, in Denmark, we have um, we have a channel called Denmark Radio, and it is um, it is funded by the tax the taxpayers in Denmark. So we ha it is a requirement to pay to it if you have anything that could receive and transmit radio or internet phone tv all kind of that yeah so and it's it's about it's about if you have one of those you have to you have to pay for that and uh, yeah. yeah so we have pretty much opened the argument of the morality of, of charging those newly relocated students for the content license which consists mainly of Danish radio programs and TV shows, which the foreigners don't understand. And uh, I can tell you from experience that 99% of people don't have a TV in the few, first few weeks when they move to Denmark and they're completely broke. And they are happy to have those, you know, some, some extra savings so they can enjoy the first few weeks. And all of a sudden they uh, get a bill for a thousand or 2000 Danish crowns it is. And uh, it can really mess up someone's budget, especially in the first few weeks. And the thing is, that really mm, enraged me in the beginning was that they don't go honestly about it at least in my case it wasn't honest uh, they just uh, knocked on my door and asked me if i have an internet uh, i said that i do have an internet and they proceeded to subscribe me to a system which i had no idea what it is um, and so i had to pay this content license even though i was not using any of, of the content that they were providing so uh, i'm not sure if it's too entirely fair for than to charge internationals for it? I don't think it is fair either. If, if you don't have internet, if you don't have, if you shouldn't pay it, then don't pay it. If you shouldn't, if it is not required that you, if you don't have internet and you are not using this access, but uh, you are here to share the information and that's good. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm happy that you are, you are doing such, such, a, such a project to help people that are disoriented in this society. Um, but what lies behind that? You, you, where do you come from? Let's take it from there. Where is the initiative coming from? Where are you? Let's start from where do you come from country-wise? <laughs> I come from Slovakia, yeah. which is a country in the center of Europe. Mm -hmm. 
I come from Bratislava, which is the capital city. Yeah, well, can you tell me more about your life? <laughs> through, through that journey yeah. from Slovakia to till here, actually, to Denmark. And how was it coming to Denmark from four years ago? Uh, it was it was difficult for me because I moved from home when I was 18. Yeah. When I came to study to, to Denmark. And um, I was lucky enough to know some people when I was coming here to Denmark. But they were not necessarily the best influence on me, and we can get to that later on yeah. if you want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I moved out from home, and it was the first time I was actually supposed to take care of myself, which is not easy for many people, and it was not necessarily easy for me either, because I was coming from a very good family and everything, um, and things were always taken care of for me, so I didn't necessarily have to do too much up until that point in my life to get things done and get things that I wanted. And it was a very hard transition for me to realize that if you need something and if you want something, you actually have to work for it and earn it because up until that point, uh, I've never experienced that. Um, and I think that's also kind of <clears throat> the point where many people find themselves when they, when they move out for the first time and especially even to Denmark. And I think many students fall into this that you don't know how to transition from being home and be, being taken care of to taking care of yourself. And there are many things that you can go wrong with in this, in this period. So that was also the idea behind the Slow Guide to help people to transition a bit to the more adult life compared to being at home. Yeah, but what, 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 are, what is your why behind that? You must have struggled with something because you are moving in that direction. It's not a pro it is a non-profit project you just made. Mm. Yeah, it is a non-profit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Up, for, to, up till now, I don't know if, if what, is your, what is your thought about that in the future, but uh, what is your why behind the project? Um, I think that people should be helping each other. And I don't want to underestimate anyone's ability to motivate other people to do great things. And I have experienced this firsthand when someone else has motivated me to do this project. Yeah. It was actually you, <laughs> <laughs> based on one of our talks. And when you said that the greatest gift one can give is his free time, something along those lines. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. And believe it or not, that's how this whole thing started because uh, I knew that I have some knowledge about being in Denmark and being a student and, and whatnot and going through some struggles. And I also have some free time. So I decided to connect those two things and it was just a very natural thing that happened afterwards. And since then it's, it kept moving. And every day I keep thinking about, you know, it's my free time that I'm donating. I'm privileged enough that I can give my full-time attention to this. So I think it's, it's, just, it's just normal. I mean, at least, at least for me. And I hope that maybe there will be someone out there listening to this or watching this and they will think the same to them. That, yeah, I do have like half an hour every day to donate to some doing something good you know it's so it's not about hard. always having the money to donate because people when they think mm -hmm. donation they think money or stuff to donate mm -hmm. and so what was it so was it was it you can you can you donate something else you are talking about donating your time i think donating the time is is the most important thing. yeah and i think people um underestimate this greatly and it's not only about donating the time but donating your conscious time and I think that's also a very interesting thing because many times people are spending time doing something, spending time with some other people, but they're not necessarily there. You know, they're not conscious when they're there. They're very unconscious. They're thinking about other things. They're in a totally different place, yeah. even though they should be spending the, the time somewhere. And it can happen also in here. It can happen to you. It can happen to me. Yeah. We are sitting here, but our mind is completely in a different place. So I think very important thing is to spend the conscious time with someone else and on some other projects. About being present, yeah. about being totally here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, beautiful. So where do you see the projects heading? Let's say in the, I, I, know, I know that you started from two months ago. So yeah, it's very the, recent, yes. It's very, but you progressed really, really. <laughs> you, are, you are really heading forward with a fast uh, pace. So. Where do you see yourself in one year, actually? Not, not, not five years, actually. Mm. In one year is... 
Yeah. So it's it's very hard to say regarding the project because it can go in very different directions. Yeah. But what I would love to see in a, in a year is to have even better team of people than we have right now. Define better team. Uh, better, and it's very hard to describe. Um, How many are you now? Uh, there's four people right now. Yeah. Working on a project. Yeah. But what I see is is connecting multiple people together in this project to create something great and yeah. maybe not necessarily taking the people from the company perspective or from, from the project's perspective, but seeing also the people that are um, being connected by the project. So the, the students that might be able to help each other afterwards because of this channel and because of this community and because of this platform. So that's what I would love to see. Um, I feel like many people are not willing to share what they know necessarily uh, and i'm not saying that everyone <laughs> and i'm not <laughs> I'm, i agree with you i'm not saying that it's everyone and i'm not saying that it's majority but there are some people that are not willing to share um, and there is a majority that is willing to share but they don't have a space for it and maybe not even a space but they don't have the push because most people need they want to do something great but they need the first push they need the nudge in order to start things off. So I think in a year, if we could get this project to that point where we nudge even the people that would not necessarily do anything in the first place, will start doing something. I think that's, that's the best thing because people need to do something, you know, people always need to Is it about them. leading? Is, about, is it about showing the way? <sighs> showing them that it is actually easy just pull up the camera and, and add value? Yeah. It might be. Um, it's very hard to say. Um, I think many people are struggling with the, the idea of like overthinking and perfectionism before they actually start something. Yeah. And I think many people fall into the trap that they think that they can start something until it's perfect. Yeah. They, in, let, if we are talking about videos, you know, they cannot start the YouTube channel until they have the 5,000 DSLR camera and proper microphone and whatnot. And in case of business, it's yeah, until they finish the school, they cannot start something because they don't have the knowledge. And it's usually just excuses. Yeah. How, um, how did we start? Both of us. Yeah, we just, we just picked up the phone. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> like, you have a camera in your pocket, you know? So if, if your excuse is that you don't have a good camera, like, get out of here, you know? <laughs> it's, it's so is it about the camera, the, the quality, or something else? I think it's about stepping out of the comfort zone and not being afraid of the result in a, in a good way, obviously. Yeah. It's not going to be a good result for the first time you try anything, but... but what is important in, 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 what is important when sharing these ideas? Is it the quality, the audio, or the, or the content? Mm, it's, it's the message that you're sending, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. uh, it, it really depends on, on what kind of channel we are talking about, it's, but it's all, always about creating the value, right? Yeah. You don't want to be taking anyone's time, uh, as hopefully we are not with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we are, we are hopefully. trying to add value. If, if you made it up until this point, 20 minutes, congrats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that too. I think that too. And I appreciate all, everybody's time that are listening right now with us. Because we are doing our best actually here, trying to add value also, trying to share our stories so we could, so we could motivate people more and more to just dive in exactly just, but th just, this is it we, we do what we preach you know we said yeah. we don't care about how is it gonna look i mean we do care about but we don't care about the having the best equipment ever you know and we don't care about being the most knowledgeable about something before diving into it and that's what we do yeah so i think if if more people started to do things like this you know i have a crazy idea let's do it <laughs> you know Let's do it. Let, let's do it. Um, yeah. Just do something. Anything. Yeah. But pe many people fall into this trap. You know, they don't do anything. No. Not, they, they do things, but not necessarily maybe the things that they want themselves to do. What would you see people do more of? In like what? ideal European world or? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. If you could imagine people doing <clears throat> something that you think this is this is something people just should dive in and do um i think people should start caring more about each other 
but it's very, I know that's a very abstract idea and it's not necessarily an activity, you know, but I think if, if people start to help each other more and, and really care about the other person in a very non-egoistic way, in a very selfless way, I think the world would transform. But obviously, that's a very utopian idea. That's not, that's not, not going to happen anytime soon. But we are doing that right now. Some people are, yeah. And it, and you it are doing it right now. You're sharing your ideas. You're sharing the, your, this survival, student survival guide. Mm. Why, why do that? Because you never know when you can motivate someone else to do great things. Precisely. <laughs> this is, you are not, you are not, I know you, so, and I, I know that it's not about getting something back from them. No, it's Isn't not. It? It's not. Because, yeah, like if, if there is one thing that I, that I really don't like, it's people that complain about things and they don't do shit about them. Like, it's really one of the worst things. And I, and I, know, I know it and I have a right to hate it because I was the same. And I was at that point and I think everyone was at some point. Can you tell me more about that? About complaining about um, something. And about complaining and about being that person. Being that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I hope I can curse in this. Can I curse? You can do that, yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, this. Yeah, there are many, many times when I when it, when it happened to me. <clears throat> Sorry, um, that I was not necessarily happy about where I was, and I was complaining about it, and I didn't do anything about it. Up, on, up until that point, I was suffering until I have actually decided to do something about it. And yeah. that's when my life transformed. Um, whether it was being in a bad relationship, whether with, with friends or family or, or girls, or or like from physical shape point of view, you know. Uh, so. Let's dive into some of this actually. <laughs> depression. If yeah. I say the word depression, anxiety, yeah. what do you think about? My childhood. <laughs> okay. No, no, not, ne not necessarily. Yeah. Um, like there were points, you know, uh, and I don't want to make this about myself. Uh, it, it is about you. It is about me. Well, then yeah. <laughs> I'll try to do it a little bit about myself. Uh, now, um, this is a funny thing, and I don't know this is going to be like completely from some some other place than from what, where we were talking until now. But I'm I'm coming from a family, uh, from a background, from a neighborhood, from a city, from a school where you are not supposed to be depressed, right? Like, um, I'm, com I'm coming from a good family, like my dad and my mom, they were both caring, amazing people. <coughs> we never had problems with money. We were living in a nice house. We always had a few cars, like, you know, higher middle class, whatever. Um, I was going to good school. Uh, but anyways, there were many points in my childhood when I, thinking and looking back at it, I, I can tell that I was depressed or at least very socially anxious. And it's very interesting and I don't want to talk about why necessarily in my case, but uh, it, I think it's very interesting that it can happen to someone with a background where you would not, not normally suppose that it's supposed to happen, right? Um, with the depression. Um, when people say like, oh, that kid is depressed, you usually think about like divorced families, you know, living in like one bedroom apartment somewhere. Um, but it can be also from, from the opposite perspective. Um, and I think it comes down to um, the unconsciousness, as we were talking about it, yeah. when spending the time. Yeah. I think this can also happen in the case of parents. And uh, okay, we could yeah. we could move forward. Yeah, yeah. Relationship. <laughs> Relationships. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what comes in mind when I say relationship? Um, are we talking about relationships with girls or relationships? Yeah, with, probably with because <coughs> I know some things about you, and mm. if you want, if you're able to share that, it would be nice. <laughs> uh, I'm willing to share everything. Like, uh, it, it depends on what you're interested in. How how that how that challenged you? How were there something that challenged you that that makes you change direction in life, um, or change the way you you do things? <sighs> I'm not sure if I can necessarily answer this question, okay. but when I can answer the previous one that you had about what comes up in my mind when you say relationships, yeah. and the thing that keeps happening, keeps uh, repeating in my head is, is the word change. Why? And uh, 
I think it's because I've been in many relationships where the relationships have changed all of a sudden. Um, and I've been in very in, in relationships which have lasted for, for a long time with, with friends that remain the same all the time. But some relationships, they can change very rapidly. And it almost seems like, like there is a pattern to some things when, when they change, especially when it comes to relationships with, uh, with girls, I would say, that there is a point which happens, and it might be also with, with friends, where you realize that the person is different than it was when you met them or that you have changed. And then all of a sudden the relationship changes as well. And I'm not able to describe what is the exact point when that happens or what leads to it. I think there are many things that lead, yeah. that lead to it, but there are many changes in, in relationship. And I think at least there was a case, in, uh, it was in my case, when I have expected relationships to last forever. Yeah. I don't know if, if you have ever experienced that when, when you met someone and you're like, I want to be friend with this person forever or, or with a girl. Sure, we have, I think everybody has. Yeah, yeah. In some, some way. But how did that affect you? Uh, I have started to appreciate things much more for yeah. what they are yeah. and when they happen. Um, I can explain that a bit because I can see that yeah. <laughs> you're a bit confused. Um, <clears throat> so when you don't take things for granted, when you understand that things will end at some point, um you appreciate them in a present moment because you realize that they might end any any second so when you spend some time with someone like you're spending time right now i'm enjoying it fully because i know that one second it can end yeah. the relationship can change and we might never speak again it, it might happen yeah. i hope it will not happen it might, it might happen. there's a chance for it that's the thing and i think when you realize this and you don't take this for, for granted as if and in, for instance i would be like yeah we're gonna be friends forever then I would maybe not even care about being in here. You know, I would not care about talking to you or I would be with my mind somewhere completely different. Mm -hmm. But because I realized that it might happen, the relationship might end sometime, then you never know which is the last moment. And that's why you want to appreciate it yeah. to the fullest. So. So appreciate every moment to the fullest. Yeah. Is one of your, yeah. 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 Whether, it, whether it's good or bad, because there is no good or bad. It's just how your mind labels things, you know. Can you talk about that? <laughs> you wanna, do you wanna dive into the philosophical stuff? <laughs> we can I, do that. <laughs> I, I love philosophy. So, so you 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 go through things in life, struggles, yeah. and you went through that. How did that affect your life? Um, is there a specific story you can tell me? about the struggles. About a time where you struggled and, and it, that may, may change you to something else. Yeah, I think, I think my, my last relationship was very tough for me. And I don't wanna to get too much into details. No. Uh, but there was a point in that period during the relationship after, where after many mistakes, I made conscious mistakes, meaning that I knew it was a mistake, but I did it anyway, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, fuck ups, but let's call it conscious mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds better. <clears throat> so many, after many conscious mistakes, uh, I've ended up in a situation and a place where I have started to really hate myself for making those conscious decisions. Because it's not easy to hate yourself when something bad happens to you <clears throat> and the decisions were not made by you and you ended up in that situation and it's a situ situ shitty situation, sorry for that. <clears throat> then it's hard to hate yourself, but when you end up in a shitty situation and you got there because of yourself, then it's very easy to hate yourself. And I was in that place where I realized that I've made many mistakes, many mistakes and I've ended up in that place. And <clears throat> many of the mistakes could have been avoided if I would have been just honest with myself and if I would accept the situations as they were and not trying to always get out, get out of uncomfortable situations, then the whole outcome would be different. 
but I haven't realized this up until very late, until it was too late. And uh, one, once the relationship ended uh, on rather bad terms, um, that's where I decided to do something that seemed a little crazy for me at the time. And that was to start being honest with myself. So honest about my intentions, honest about what I can do, honest about where I am and how I am. And obviously it didn't happen in one second. It took me a few weeks to get into that position. But after that, I, I started to realize that um, there is a big burden that I have dropped from myself when I started to be honest with myself. I realized that you don't have to hurt other people and be hurt by other people if you are honest with yourself. Um, because many problems and many situations that are bad and that hurt people and get yourself hurt originate from you being dishonest with yourself. And I know that I have said honest like 20 times in the last few minutes. But yeah, that's, that's, but that must be something really important for you. What, it, it, it sounds like it, that's changed something in you. Yeah, yeah. A lot. Uh, I like to think that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so honesty is, is one of the words you could <clears throat> you could speak about. Yeah, I could, you, could, <laughs> you, you could advise people to, to be maybe. I think life gets much easier when you are honest and when you stop lying. Not just because of if you don't lie, you don't have to remember what you were lying about. <laughs> Things get easier. But also you might you will find yourself in much better situations in the long term when you're honest compared to short term because uh, yeah it, it, like things are much better in short term when you are dishonest with yourself right like yeah that pizza is not gonna hurt me like yeah I, I really like that girl you know <laughs> when you when you know that you don't just this once yeah yeah exactly <laughs> And it's cool for like a few days, you know, like the next day after party or whatnot. But after half a year, you just realize that you hate yourself. That's not a, that's not a nice place to be, you know? No. Uh, but if you flip it and you'll be, all right, well, I'll be honest with myself. Like my dad is shit. I need to start eating healthier, you know? Or, well, this person that I'm hanging out with, like, I don't like them. You know, they're, they're not a good influence on me. So the trade-off for that in the short term is going to be you don't like salads, well, you're not going to eat uh, nice food. And if you don't like that friend or, you know, you will be alone for some time. And it's not easy for you, especially when you are very unconscious and you can, cannot be by yourself in a room. But then it's very, very difficult. But in the long term, you will realize that by avoiding the toxic relationships, you were actually able to build new ones which are much better, right? Which are honest because you're honest. And that's when the transformation part comes and it doesn't have to be too long. It doesn't have to be five years until that happens. It can happen in one or two months. It really depends on how strong you believe in it. Um, and I think many people should try this if they feel like what they are doing is not su suiting them too well. If you feel like going to a party every Thursday and Friday and hooking up with someone is not making you fulfilled and your life worthwhile, then maybe try to be honest with yourself and see why, why it is that, uh, that you want to do those things, right? Um, I think for many people that are drinking heavily and using drugs and using sex to avoid their situation, uh, doing that to avoid the situation they are in, right? So maybe instead of trying to get out of the situation, it might be a better idea to, to fix the situation. But that's not easy. And it's scary. It's very scary to ask yourself, why is it that you want to be drinking? Yeah. Because for many people, that's a very dark place where that thing is coming from. You know? For some people, that's, that can be abuse in childhood or whatever yeah. that's crippling up on them and they need to drink to get out of their head. To numb the thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's not very, it's not easy. And I'm privileged enough to not have anything like that in my life. But 
I know that there are many people that do have that in their life. Yeah. That's deep stuff, man. <laughs> That's really deep. Well, so what was the question students were asking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I compared it to, to having a ghost in, in front of you mm. and when you, when you drink or do some drugs, you close your eyes. Mm. But when you wake up again and you open your eyes, everything is the same. The ghost is there. Yeah. It, it never disappeared. You just numb the pain, close your eyes, and you should remember when you wake up again, it's there still. Yeah. So it's, for me, was it a, it's about facing the problems and going to your fear. Doing the difficult thing, you know. Doing the difficult thing. Doing the but hard many work. people don't, you know, and that's what I was speaking about, that yeah. many people just complain about things and never do anything about them. Yeah. That's, it's, that's, the, that's the tough part, you know. Because if people were actually started, if people actually started to do something about it, their problems, you know, <laughs> I mean, it sucks to start doing something about your problems because then you cannot complain about them. <laughs> you have to start working on them. You have to do something, which is which is not very comfortable for many people. Because many people are just comfortable talking about their problems and not trying to fix them. What are they seeking for? Do you think when they when they speak about their problem, loud, loud? What are you, what do you think from your from your perspective? Yeah. they are seeking. I just, I think every. And I think that's everyone, but I think they're seeking acceptance, right? Because everyone wants to be accepted within whatever community, tribe, gang, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Uh, and you want to, you want the social validity behind it. So, and also you, tr you kind of probably want the problem to disappear. You know, when I complained to you that um, my car broke yesterday, so maybe you'll tell me that you will fix it for me. <laughs> maybe that's what they're looking maybe for. Maybe seeking comfort. Maybe, maybe yeah. be like, oh yeah, that sucks, man. That sucks that you're a cowboy. Let's have a beer, you know. Yeah. Let's forget about it. Let's deal with it tomorrow. Yeah, I think that's that's what people are are doing. But why they are doing it, that I cannot answer. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I can't. Okay. I can I cannot tell you. Back to your projects. Yeah, back to my projects. You have been doing websites for Krukan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for our shop, our barber shop. How was the experience? It, 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 because it, it was it was in a specific way. You, you, you came, you introduced yourself. Yeah. And can you tell me more about that process? Because I, I think many, many people could learn from that, the way you did it. <clears throat> to, to get like your first gig as a, <laughs> as a freelancer or... Yeah, you, you 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 sold yourself without begging for it. All oh, right. Um, I think, and like, let's keep this one short. But I think if ever, any, anyone is out there listening to this and they feel like they could make yeah web website or, or logo design or shoot a video or make pictures for some shop, um, it's it's very scary to come up and and tell people that you are doing the things and, and even ask money for it, especially when it's like one of the first jobs you're ever doing, or even worse, if it's the very first job that you want to be doing. Um, but for those people out there, if, if they're wondering if they could do it, then yes, you can do it. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, you can do it because everyone thinks that they cannot do things in the beginning when you don't have a validity behind it. So meaning like if you don't do any projects before, but I think, um, you know, you have to do a first one somewhere at some point, even if it's going to be free. Um, but the only way is to actually come down and, and ask. Um, but then again, don't push it too much. Because I think maybe people don't realize in the, all of the stress and hype when they are going to sell their business and freelance or whatever for the first time, that some people actually don't want the service. <laughs> some people don't really give a fuck. Um, so that is one of the things that people should keep in mind that if you come down there, like open a dialogue, don't do a business pitch, you know, open a dialogue, be like, Hey, I'm doing this. Do you need help? You know, because most of the time people are, are normal, you know, they will tell you if, if they need help, uh, especially when, you know, you're pricing yourself right. And if you're doing a good job, then I don't think it should be, it should be an issue. Could you more, be more specific about how you've approached us 
and how you how you did this project well as you probably know i was your customer before before that uh for for some period of time i don't know half a year or, or a year before before that and i was working with web design and i saw that your web design was really non intuitive <laughs> yeah let's, let's call it that <laughs> let's call it an intuitive yeah. yeah so i um i think it was your brother who i was talking to and yeah. i mentioned that i'm working with web designs and we i don't know if we even agreed on of on me doing a demo for him but i did it anyway uh, so i just made some some basic website for him and showed him like this is how it could look and i think he liked it because we are sitting here right now yeah. so i think he liked it <laughs> and then we were talking about price and uh, he was very surprised when i was offering a, like very nice price for him very you know uh, non-danish price <laughs> for these kind of <laughs> services so it was uh, it was definitely nice and yeah i i think that that's how it went down and then we just started to discuss the user experience of, of the website like uh, how it should look actually and what kind of vibe should give off for for, for the shop yeah because i know for you it's very important to have the details right yeah. uh, when it comes to the barbershop i think we needed to portray that image of the barbershop on the website and i think we were able to do it very nicely so i'm very happy about that um, but i think very important thing was that we actually open a dialogue and we talk about the things that you wanted to have there and we were able to meet the expectations so that's that's what i'm really happy about but you didn't you didn't you didn't sell it in a, in a way you you came really so, subtle about it and cool about it you, you did it really nicely that, that is the thing i wanted to bring out actually is that you, you sold it without selling it without pitching it without trying too much you you, you just offer this uh, this help mm. And you you did it like the student survival way, mm -hmm. just doing it, yeah. And she put out put yourself out there and and it it worked. Yeah, it's amazing. Web, you know, the, the website is still up and it's amazing. <laughs> we love it. Yeah. Well, and I, now you know, now, now we're here. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the most important thing is that I've never actually really came into your shop with the intention of of like selling you a super expensive website and making ton of money on it. It was literally you two guys are super cool, and your website is shit. So I want to help you out. <laughs> it, was, it was. It was. It was. Let's, let's it was literally it like that. Let's keep it real. It was. I, I didn't exactly choose these words because we didn't know each other back then. But no. <laughs> it was. It was something like that. Yeah. yeah. So it it comes down to like, yeah. If if you can help someone, then then do it. Yeah. Because. I, I still believe like I still <laughs> I still believe in people. I still believe in people, you know, that if, if you know something and you can help someone out, even if it's like a business or personal stuff, like do it, you know. If you can help someone to do some something that might change his business or his life, and all you have to do is exchange like three hours of binge watching Netflix series for your work. I mean like it seems so obvious, you know, but many people don't don't realize it. It seems so obvious, but it's no, like not, not for many people actually yeah yeah and i've met people like that i've met people that uh, i thought were my friends you know and uh, we were talking some business and at the end of the meeting um instead of actually helping me they just they just promoted their own business they would bill their hours to me you know and this kind of a thing okay. um but that was like the most ex extreme case yeah most of the time people are just people um people will help you most of the time you know yeah. but there are people that don't um but yeah fuck those people don't, don't be friends with those <laughs> more <laughs> of the story <laughs> so it's about having the right attitude of from you because you, you say it you still believe in people that, yeah that must be that tells more about you than other people <laughs> actually uh, that, that is beautiful so. i hope so yeah what could you tell the 16 18 years old Michael or anyone in, in, in his place um, and advice any advice yeah like precise things to yeah I don't know I don't think that I would want to change anything I mean I think I'm in the right place right now 
and there is a reason how I got, why I got, the, yeah. got here, you know. Can you, can you explain more about that? <laughs> because, so, if you change something in the past, in your life, like a 16 year old, you're 18 years old, what will happen now? Yeah, well, I would have, like, if, if I would have avoided some of the bad things, because that's probably what you want to do, right? Like, you, you, want, you want to avoid the bad ones, you wouldn't go back in time and tell yourself not to enjoy yourself. So if that was the case, like when I was 15 or 16, and uh, there would be like relationships with girls, for example, you know, um, I've been through some bad relationships with girls back then, but I could have could go back and tell myself not to do things. But then today I would not have the knowledge of, yes, things can get really messed up when you do something like that and that and that. And, you know, quite frankly, I'm much happier that my, relationship at 16 and that in flames rather than at 25 or 30 without the experience you know because it's much easier to lose a girlfriend when you're a teenager than lose a wife when you're 30 and you know um i think it's it's important to make mistakes but to learn from them yeah it's the most important part is to learn from them not to make them obviously <laughs> you don't want to make mistakes but hey, you have to learn from something so, yeah, I think that's, that's the thing. <laughs> Maybe that's even the thing that I would tell to myself, like, do more stupid things, you know? Cause, and, and learn from them. Yeah, because it's easier to get away with doing stupid things when you're 16, you know? Like, you can dye your hair green and then, like, wear a red T-shirt every day. And, like, <laughs> and be like, everyone is like, yeah, he's 16, whatever, he's fucked up. But do that when you're 30, you know? Like, <laughs> you're 23 in my case, like, not good. Not easy, not easy no. to get away with things at this point. What are your what, what what are some habits do you do in your day? Is there any habit you do every day? Yeah, I've only like one really strict habit, and that's uh, taking cold showers. Why? Um, there is a health reason and there is a mental reason behind yeah. it. Um, the health reason, I mean, you can you can find it all over the internet. Uh, yes. It's, it helps the immune system. Uh, it slows the heart. No, I don't know. Just, just Google it. <laughs> it feels helps. good. Yeah, it's good. I, I think it helps with the circulation of blood or something. It might be. Yeah, yeah. I think it is. Like I was, I was really following Wim Hof yeah. uh, back in back in the day, yeah. and I was also swimming in a sea and and whatnot before it got too cold. <laughs> but what are the um, mentally uh, part of it? The mental part of it yeah. for me, the most important one is that I picked a habit and I'm sticking to it. And this is something that I've been struggling with my whole life and my whole childhood. That I was never persistent with the things that I had picked for myself. And I think it's very important for people to build this habit of sticking to a routine and sticking to something that you tell yourself to do. Because I think it's very important to realize that you are some sort of, you're sort of a, manager of your own life right like you have to give yourself tasks and and give yourself some awards or whatever recognition for achieving the task afterwards uh, if you don't well then life is pretty hard right uh, so picking a routine and sticking to it is i think very important and this was like something very small that i could do you know like take a cold shower every morning because it, it wakes you up, you know, it's, um, it, it's not that bad, you know, it's, you get used to it after some time. And it's, yeah, it's just a habit, you know. So it's not about the shower itself, no, necessarily? It's, no, not, 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 not necessarily for me, no. Oh. It's, uh, I'm, I cannot say that I entirely enjoy it. Like, <laughs> it's cold, It's right? cold, it's, yeah. cold. <laughs> it's cold after all. But I get to the shower and I look at the handle and I think like, I could make it hot, but then I'm like, but I thought to myself, no, I'm going to take cold showers. So whenever I feel like switching to a hot shower, I'm like, no, I told myself do something and I, and I stick to it. And it might seem like very insane. And it kind of seems insane to me when I say it, because it might be, you know, too much to, to stick to things religiously like this, but for me, it was, as I said, it was hard for, um, 
to transition into this kind of life where you have to have a responsibility and you have to stick to things that you say you do. And this is helping me a lot. Um, and I advise anyone to pick something, not necessarily cold showers, but it could be something as simple as I'll wash my face every day before going to bed. You know, like I'll do it every single day and I can count on myself that I will do it. And the award for doing that is, well, you'll have a better skin, obviously, after some time. Um, so I think it, it, it's really simple, even as eating an apple a day. Like, and these things are very good for you. You know, many people are, are sticking to habits which are not good for them, like smoking, drinking, whatever we were talking, talking about before. So switching things up and focusing on the better things, I think it can really transform someone's life. Um, and in my case, it started with like, let's take cold showers. And after like, I don't know, three, four, five months that I've been doing that, I realized that it's not just the cold showers that I'm sticking to, it's also my promises, which is like, <laughs> which is very insane because, uh, yeah, um, like if you would meet, meet me like two years ago and I would tell you that I will do something, I would probably not do it. And that's not good. You know, so I needed to change that. I needed to change that somehow, but I didn't know how because I was falling into habit of starting things and quitting things and giving a promise and not delivering. And I hated myself because of that. So I needed to find a way to change that. And obviously cold showers are not the answer to it. It comes from a much deeper place, but it comes from the realizing that you have to manage your life in a certain way. And you have to make sure that you will be following the things that you have set yourself to do. I think, I think that for many people, this, um, this is not easy thing to do because the distractions are always of a higher value to people than, than the result. Uh, people don't go to gyms, you know, people don't work on their projects all night. It's, um, but yeah, if, if there is one advice that I could give to people is like, st start sticking to what you set yourself out to do. Yes. Small changes. Yeah, start with the small things. Have you seen the video on, on my page? Or the Navy, uh, Navy SEAL? Yeah, like start, start with making your bed in the morning. Yeah, so, such a small thing. Yeah. And he explains why also it's about just yeah. sticking to something really, really small, just to start, just to discipline yourself, actually. Because you need to start trusting yourself again, right? Yeah. Like if for 22 years you were not able to do something, like if you promised someone to call them and you didn't, like ever, then you're not going to trust yourself. Like who would trust you, you know? You have, to, you have to take like the outside look on this. Like if you were not brushing your teeth before going to bed for five years, like would you trust yourself to start doing something else like immediately? Like no, you have to build the trust. Yeah. And you build the trust from the small things. Yeah. So you need to rebuild the trust that you have within yourself that you can do some big things. Like when we say that with the student survival guide, like we are going to change the way Danish students live in Denmark, where international students live in Denmark. Like that's huge, you know? Yeah. But slowly I realized that, okay, I can maybe trust myself when I say something like that because I am sticking to some things that I set myself out to do. So yeah, start by making the bed, start by washing your face before you go to sleep. Yeah. Do the good things to yourself. That's simple. That's simple. Yeah. Mark, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for sharing your story and your daily routine and your habits. And it is really beautiful about connecting human beings. Just sharing your time is not about sharing the money always. Mm. So if you don't have the money, you can share your time. Just a few hours a week, maybe a month. That could be something that means a lot to some someone out there. So thank you for that, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me.